no master hey. Ten bad Sporting Tribune fans, this is Anthony Wynn. Welcome to another episode of Westwood Open House, episode number seven. And I'm with my star host. Yes, sir. Donovan Carter. Welcome back. New episode, man. Make sure y'all please like, please subscribe. Shout out to Williams Homes. Thank you so much for everything you do and continue to do. We got an event coming up. What's the event? Uh, please, so we have know. Hollywood Days. If you're a realtor in Los Angeles, uh, we have Hollywood Days where you, you can take a picture of D.C. and tour the new facility of those new Williams Ranch. And, uh, yeah, you get, to, you get to shoot a custom video with yes. Donovan with the home tour. So uh, realtors, reach out to D.C. Updates on his Instagram page. But going back to the Bruins, man, uh, I was at the game this last Saturday night, uh, the first – Big Ten, black, I would say back to Big Ten after dark night. Kind of yes. like Pac-12 Pac after dark. Yeah, reminiscent. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, was a, it was a great game, actually, in, in the defense of the Bruins where the defense played a hell of a game in the second half. Yes, they did. They uh, came out, played better. We got that pick six right before the half mm -hmm. from my man B. Addison, man. He's, it, it was crazy because he an Oregon yep. transfer, so I know that was a big moment for him. But, uh, yeah, defense, you know, they play good, play hard. Oregon is it, tough. We was talking about the last episode with their offense, how they want to get you in space. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to get you tired. They do tempo. But, uh, you know, we play hard. We, we fought. We competed. And uh, that's why I'm just proud to, you know, see from from my guys is that they just keep fighting. You know, the, mm -hmm. it's not the result that we want, of course. We want the dub, but, you know, you want to go out there and you want to fight, you want to compete, and uh, you just want to, you know, just keep getting better. That's the goal. Yeah, I like the level of intensity from B.A., right? And yeah. he carried that to the third quarter. I don't know if you saw the whole game, but – uh, he definitely got it under Dylan Gabriel's skin. He was talking some mess. Yeah, but for that's sure. the energy we need, right? At yes. all games. If if we can translate that energy to plays and execute, like Coach Foster said, we should be okay as far as momentum wise, but we gotta keep that high energy. Yes, we do. We gotta keep the energy. We just gotta play a complete game at some point. That's my goal. Uh, you know, offense firing, defense firing, special teams. I mean, once we do that, the sky's the limit for us. I mean, we won in uh, what are we one in three right now? Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of, you know, getting halfway through the, during the season. Got a tough matchup this week versus Penn State on the road. But I, I, you can't question our toughness. Yep. I mean, even seeing Ethan in there just hobbling, man, I, you know, you feel bad for my guy. Yep. you like, man, get out of there. But he, he doesn't, you know, that, that, just, that just shows the character of his team. Because anybody else, they would have been like, well, we losing. I'm out. Yep. I'm cool. But he, you, they had to, they had to tell him to come out, and he played as long as he could. And yeah. I just, you know, I tip my hat to the team, man. They like some fighters, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep fighting all season. I like the energy and the mindset of the team, right? Yes. Carlin at post game raised his hand and said, "Look, I take full authority. We didn't keep Ethan up on his feet. You know, we take accountability for that. You don't see many teams that." really had a tough loss, well, you know, account to that. So to the team's credit, what I do love is the team is all together, like we said, a family. Yeah, yes. And they felt bad. I mean, having Ethan pretty much the whole game, you know, Ethan couldn't maneuver. Yeah. And that's not too fault of, of Ethan or anyone. It's, you know, we're collective as a team. But yeah. one thing I do respect is the Bruins take it as a team, win or lose. You have to, man. I mean, that's 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 the big thing about being on a team. It's not just a one-man show. It's 11, 11 guys on offense, defense, working all together for a common goal. And, uh, yeah, you know, you feel bad. You know, you, t you spend all this time preparing for these 12 games. You want to be positive. You want to be good. You want to see a quarterback flourish. But I, you know, like you said, I just like people taking accountability. I don't see any like fighting or yep. pointing the fingers because that's what happens when you losing. People want to blame everybody else. But you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what can I do better? How can I make this team better? How could I uh, finish this year off better? And then how can I? Give myself a a, a better uh, position, yep. to, you know, if you want to go to the next level too. You know, you play with some great players during your heyday at UCLA. You play with Brett Hundley. Yes. Uh, you play with Anthony Barr. Yeah, yeah. And shout from, out them guys. <laughs> for many wins that they had, you also had a lot of tough losses, right? Yeah, for sure. And we we're talking off camera about that Arizona State loss that you guys had, right? What, yeah. What was that yeah. mindset? Kind of kind of walk us through the the mindset of a player taking a big loss and trying yeah. to rebound to the next game? Man, embarrassing, first of all. Because, I mean, I, I, I grew up out here in the San Fernando Valley, 
went to one of the greatest high schools out here, Birmingham, yep. and we won. You know, that was that was a culture. I was used to winning. Mm -hmm. Then when I get to UCLA, we, my first year, we're four and eight, and I'm just like, what's going on? Like, I'm not, I'm not used to losing. Yep. Then I'm kind of seeing like that, like people is like used to that, like that's their culture, and we had to like change that because like we want to be winners around here. We don't want to get used to like losing and being okay with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a little embarrassing. Just like man, especially because I red shirted my first year, so I was like, man, I wonder if I could have went out there and like made, help help the team make a difference. Right. But just push me to just get better. I'll say, you know what, this game is done. It's a new week. Uh, at, at that point, I was helping the team on on the scout team, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just have a great week of practice and, and get them better because they need it. Wow, that's your great team player. And you know, after the game, that tough loss against Oregon, uh, I was at the press conference. Yes. And I asked Coach Foster, one of the takeaways that I can take on the road at Penn State, and this is what he had to say. Coach, you, you mentioned your defense. Um, the Brian Addison pick six gave your defense some momentum, and your defense held Oregon to six points in the second half. What's some of the things that you like that you're going to take with you to on the road to Penn State? Look at that. Look at you with a positive question. Um, we're just going to go to Penn State and just continue to build on this. That's all we got to do. It's not, um, like we said, we're going to learn from these losses. And I know I see it. So I know y'all see it. Some of you choose not to, but they're improving. And we're just going to continue to improve and keep working hard. And eventually, it's going to turn around. And that's what Coach Foster had to say. You know, a lot of positive things from that takeaway from that Oregon second half. Mm -hmm. I just like the intensity, you know, and what yes. Coach Foster was saying. These guys don't quit. Yeah. You guys might not see it now, but they are getting better. And it, and it goes to show, you know, the defense did not quit that second half. Absolutely, man. They fought. They just kept going, man. It was tough. You know, we was down a lot at halftime, but didn't really score any points after that. Uh, man, Carson Swissinger, man, leading the tackles for us again. wasn't Really wasn't a guy I was kind of noticing. I feel like we was all talking about Kane and yeah. K.J. Wallace and all the DBs, but he's kind of been coming there, playing good ball. And, yeah, we just, we just got to just accept the challenge. You know, yeah. it is what it is. So, you know, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Yeah. But, yeah, defense got just got to keep fighting. We just got to get, you know, get more turnovers like that. We got the pick six, yeah. like we said at the beginning of the half. You know, we get turnovers, give the ball back to the offense. Offense, they, they're going to they're gonna get it together. Yeah. We got one of the greatest offensive coordinators in the country. Yeah. But we just got to give we just got to give him time. You know, yeah. that's it's, it's unfortunate. Coach Foster just came in. Yeah. And, and, you know, he didn't, even, he didn't even come in at the end of the season, like middle right, right after signing day. So he kind of just inherited all this, and you know he's doing he's doing what he can do. Yeah, let's we'll talk about like I, it's funny that you saw that clip and Coach Foster was saying, "Look at me with the positive questions. We want to keep it positive. Yeah. Let's focus on the positive stuff, please. Such as recruiting. You know, it's it's an unsung hero that we actually got another great running back, Carson Cox, yes. next year coming in. Four stars, by the way. Yeah, and I'm excited about that. So there's a lot of great talent coming, influx of talent coming to Westwood. Talk about those two new uh, recruits that are just signed. Yeah, we got two. Two new receivers uh, from Utah, four stars as well. So I'm excited. They was at the game, and you know the results were the results. But for them to actually still want to come and like still want to come to UCLA, man, I, I, I love that. But that just shows that UCLA is such a special place. You know, from the campus to the Rose Bowl to the vibes. I mean, Coach Foster, he's a great recruiter, a great man. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. You know, I just hope you know. We just keep getting more recruits in and more people want to come and just see what we got going. Because, um, yes, it, we, we're going to get it going over here. Just give us a little time. We're we, we going to get it going, though. You know, you see that with excitement, you know, with the, with the kids, you know, with the recruits, and also with this current team. Yes. Everybody thinks Coach Foster is doing a great job in that locker room, right? There's not yes. one person that can out there say that, hey, there's not a great leader in there, right? He's very resilient. Yes. Even in a loss, he's going to talk about, you know, the, the ways that they need to get better. Yes. So talking to, to his defenses, let's give Coach Foster some time to recruit. Please. You know, yeah. he's, he's out there, you know, recruiting heavily. He's out there with the alumni. He's yeah. making sure that this is coming back to the Terry Donahue days, right, yeah. where it's grassroots. So out of respect for Coach Foster, you're doing a great job. Let's keep it going. Yeah, he's yeah. learning too. Like, this is his first year being a head coach. You yeah. know, to me it's like, uh, you know, being a new parent. Yeah. Like when you first have a kid, like this is your first time, you know, being a parent. So you're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn lessons. 
you just gonna go through the mo you know, you're going through the motions, but he man, Coach Foster gonna be great. We're gonna be all right. Yep. And we just gotta make sure, you know, he's gotta make sure he quiet that noise in the locker room because there's so much outside stuff that can get in and distract the team. Mm -hmm. But this is where we have to be even more locked in, yep. more focused than ever, because yeah, you gotta you gotta quiet that that outside noise. Definitely, definitely. So let's look ahead real quick, DC. Next yep. week's game against Penn State and Happy Valley. Yeah, yeah. And we got the I mean we're trying to make it a happy early game. Game. Trip. <laughs> Nine o'clock, everybody. Yep. Wake, set your alarm. Uh, yeah, we start at 12 o'clock daytime, though. But yeah, early game for us. Really, like, first, uh, you know, our first road game in the yep. Big Ten. Of course, we all know about Happy Valley, just yep. how prestigious, how historic that stadium is. I wish I could make it down there, but they, they airports is, I don't know, they flight, their flight situation is crazy out there. But I'll be prepared next time. But yeah, I'm excited, man. Penn State, I think they, they ranked number 9 or 10 in the country right now. Right. They had a, they, they played Illinois last week. That was, I feel like that was probably they, maybe they only challenge. Bowling Green gave them a challenge early in the year. But, uh, you know, they balance, man. If you know about, if you know about, excuse me, Penn State, always have good linebackers, have great defense, great running backs. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a challenge for us, you know, and that's every week. But yeah. we're going to have to accept the challenge, go out to stop the run. Make them pass, make them get uncomfortable, and yeah, just stay in our lane, man. Hopefully, we need to get get back to the basics yeah. right now. I feel like may, sometimes we do things that make things more challenging, but let's get back to the basics. Let's run the ball, play action, pass the ball. I think when I was looking at the stats, Bowling Green had a tight end goal for like over 100 yards. Yeah. So yeah, let's get these tight ends involved. Let's get these running backs involved, receivers involved, and you know, let's have a, let's have a good day. That's a great preview, DC. And let's talk about Penn State real quick. Drew Aller has much as passing yards as Ethan, right? Yes. So you're talking about a guy that this is a run heavy team. Yes. Right. And when you take a, when we take a look at the last game against Illinois, they barely beat Illinois by two touchdowns. It was a closer game than it looked like, right? Yes. And Illinois, don't get the twisted. They're at number ranked 18 in the nation. Man. They came in there and they, they compete against Penn State because yeah. they went toe-to-toe -to -toe in the run game. So talk about how important the run game for UCLA to, to develop in this in this game. It's very important. I think for me, I'm old school a little bit with football. I just always believe if you run the ball, like it just sets up everything else, and also it just defeats your defense, the, the other defense. When you when they, because like they know it's coming, mm -hmm. they know that you're gonna run the ball, and you just still getting five, you know, ten yards of carry, and just you know, just keep being physical with them. Because mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what they think. You know, they're gonna come in thinking, I don't know. People just think about California and what what we got going, and you know, they they the Pac-12, and yeah. you came from the Pac-12, and they by the beach, and we not tough. Like, nah, we're tough. We are gonna come in there. We just gotta knock him in the mouth, and, and we gotta shock the world. Nobody's gonna, nobody's expecting us to win. Nobody's probably giving us a chance besides the people that's part of UCLA and on that team. So you know, like some wise person told me, man, why not us? Why, why, why can't, why can't we win? Why can't we go out there and, and, and do what we're supposed to do? And we just gotta play a complete game all around. Nobody's perfect, but. We gotta be damn near perfect. You know what? Uh, I feel it's a little bit disrespectful to the kids out there in Westwood. They are labeled as a 27 point underdog, <laughs> uh, 27 and a half point underdog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think again, I think the Bruins will cover this line. Yes. If it's 28, please take the please take the 28. I think the kids will come out playing hard. Yes. Ride that momentum from the first. I'm sorry, the second half of the Oregon game to this game. And even though it's an early start, I think you know the kids will be you know hyped up to play this game. Yeah, for sure. I mean. Who, who's not gonna be hyped up to go play at Penn State? Like yeah. this, if you think of like stadiums in college football, that's definitely like one of the top top five that you want to play at. I don't know if it's a whiteout, but either way, it's gonna be loud. It's gonna be fun, mm -hmm. and yeah, just go out. Like this is what you. This is what you come to college for. This is right. why you come to UCLA. This is why you come to Power Five schools to play in these games. These are the games that the scouts are looking at, that, yeah. that, that they're going to analyze. So, like, you know, I always my, – my thing would always play, like, man, big players make big plays yeah. in big games. And this is one of those big games. So, like, have a day. Man, that's, that's a powerful message. So, we're going to take you to a bit – I know last week we had Jack Jr. on. I think that segment got removed from the streaming channels. But this is Jack Jr. talking about Penn State, guys. We're going to leave you with that segment, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Westwood Open House. Yeah. Now the second game, well, the second game I want you to cover, just based on team or name, is Oregon. What do you know about Oregon? Uh, the great strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Portland. Portland. <laughs> This is Eugene. <laughs> oh, Eugene? Yeah. Oh, no, they're going to lose, too. <laughs>
That's a great one. So uh, I don't know anything about the strip club situation, but <laughs> this one might be a little bit different. What about Penn State? What do you know about Penn State? Penn State. I don't know nothing about Penn State. Um, Happy Valley? Happy Valley. Not even Happy Valley. State Penn? <laughs> State Penn. We're hoping that uh, the Bruins can lock, the, lock them out on defense. All right, another Cedar team name, Fresno State. Fresno State. The Fresno, listen, got some ugly people. That might be a tough one for UCLA. Because, <laughs> you know, when you're playing football, you, know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, Fresno State does play them tough. Yeah, Fresno State's always a tough game. Like, we, we played them in the past. But a lot of them kids, like you said, they're ugly. And they're also, <laughs> they also like got chips on their shoulder because they didn't get the UCLA SC offer. Yeah, yeah. So they had to go to Fresno they State. They had to go to Fresno State. And, and you know they they play they play hard against us in SC because they know like we we could we should be there where y'all. And this is their only game that's gonna be televised. They played Michigan last year. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. All right, yeah. man. <laughs> we'll see. Probably, who knows? We played them last game, so maybe yeah, first and yeah, last game. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah. I, I didn't, my team didn't make it good. Glendale Community College. <laughs> That's where we went. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and now, now, this is the game of the year. USC. Jeffrey. Versus U UCLA. Yes. Ooh, it's going to be a tie. <laughs> can well, it end size? Do, do overtime, think? overtime, man. But uh, I don't think there's ever. It's not like NFL. Like you gotta finish. You gotta finish. Somehow, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. You know what's? I, I, like I said, I've been to both schools, not uh, academically. I've been there to party. <laughs> I've been uh, the, probably the crazier parties were probably USC because it was yeah. it was scary to go back to your car. <laughs> <laughs> but UCLA is a lot safer. I don't know, man. I, I'm gonna go with UCLA. If I have to put my money on it, I will go with UCLA. Mm. Uh, I mean, I mean, I just, I mean, we're here. I get the UCLA vibes going. You know, I might. Oh, yeah, well, I'm definitely gonna it's go at through the crib it. Too. Yeah, it's, it's at UCLA too. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. That's a pretty, pretty crazy game, huh? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good a, experience. It's always yeah. slugfest. Share your yeah. experience playing. Uh, yeah, what's it like? Man, it's, it's, it's fun. Is it ghetto? Um, if it's at SC a little bit. You Is know, it like because... opening season for uh, uh, the Chargers Raider game? You know, I called it the Cholo Bowl. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's just Cholos on both sides going at it. It depends like where we at in the season. So if, if we bowl for doing really well and this, yeah. is, and this game is going to count toward the winning division yeah. or maybe going out now going to the you know they got the playoffs for for the ncaa yeah but it all, it's, it's always better when it's more at stake yeah, yeah, but, yeah i mean it's always fun like it hasn't i don't think it's been any fights in a minute but yeah sometimes people get a little hostile i mean now they yeah. sell liquor in the stadium they but, do yeah so, no way so you just got you know you got to depend but um and with yeah, the, the mexicans like they're usually the ones that fight at the fight at the stadium who, yeah. who do they cheer for Mexicans usually like UCLA. UCLA? Yeah, black people like SC. Black people like SC? Yeah. That's so funny. So, yeah. Who do the white people like? Fresno State. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think probably both. Like, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they pretty, I mean, you got like the, the Orange County people, I feel like they big like yeah. SC fans. Asians are UCLA. Yeah, yeah, for the most yeah. part. The this, this guy didn't go to UCLA. He's, <laughs> he's the worst Asian ever. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I wish I was a Bruin. He opened up a Vietnamese pho restaurant. <laughs> hey, that's going, it's going, pho going crazy right now. Hey, everyone has yeah. a pho. It's so good. Are you Vietnamese? Yeah. Oh, no way, I guess that. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I didn't know. Oddly enough, my mom had a nail salon too. No way, really? Oh, that's oh, hilarious. What was it called? It was called Unique Nails. Unique Nails, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, man, thanks for having me on. Jack, uh, I know you have some uh, club dates to promote. Recently. Yeah, I mean, I'm go my tour, uh, you don't know Jack, tour is coming to uh, your city. I'm doing uh, Canada, Vancouver, Montreal. I'm going to London. Uh, I'm doing Las Vegas New Year's Eve uh, at the House of Blues. Uh, I'm doing a very big show in Los Angeles, the Alex Theater in Glendale, California, where I was born and raised, uh, May 15th, May 17th. Uh, but I'm going to a bunch of cities too. Uh, you can check it out on my website, jackjunatomic.com. Thank you guys, man. And busy, bro. Yeah, bro. That's a blessing. I got five kids, bro. <laughs> Thank you for buying a ticket. <laughs> This is the part that's uh, the time where we give you a gift. Oh man, and, thank you. you know, yes. And you're gonna go ahead and give DC a gift. So this, I'll DC let you go ahead. Oh, for sure, man. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, bro. That's Westwood Open House. That's our thing. You bring a gift, we give you a gift back. Thank Whatever you, you bring, we're gonna donate. Thank to you, bro. Chill, my children's Mattel out of UCLA. That awesome. So yeah, long story short, man. This is a book me and my boy um, did. It's called. It's, it's, it's my boy Josh. It's called Dream Big Books. 
And it's a story about me and my family. Amazing. And about just, you know, financial literacy, going after your dreams. Yeah. And in a, in, in our, in Porsches. Awesome. I, yeah. I love Porsches. You're a car fan or yeah. a Jean Big Book fan. And there's also a, a coloring book as well. Awesome. That you can color on the side and it's questions that you can ask. That they asked for the kids. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna have all my five kids fight over this one book. <laughs> thank you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate on. you. Hell yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, dude. Thank you so much for this book. Um, I actually have a gift for you. Uh, it's not something. It's someone. Uh, my good friend Nick Bronsozian is here, and he was gonna make a little donation. Hey, yes. Yes. So, let's see. So, uh, I'm basically here. Uh, I really appreciate you guys having me here. I, I have a million dollar check here in pesos for <laughs> uh, the UCLA Mattel Children's Hospital. It's my pleasure to donate this to you guys and um, have you know great kids benefit from it. Thank you so much. Thank we you so much. That. That's amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nick. Well, can you tell the uh, the Westwood Open House audience what you do uh, and you know what you do for community? Sure. Um, I'm a mortgage broker for the last 20 years now. Um, just some great days, bad days. Overall, I think uh, just being part of the community, helping out families, getting into homes, uh, refinancing their homes, just making the whole pride of being a homeowner and uh, the ownership process as simple as possible and help, helping families get into their homes uh, just like I, I didn't uh, Jack. Think, I didn't think I could get a home. I'm not like <laughs> this sounds like a really fake job. I didn't really, I couldn't get a home. But I'm home he but it literally he made it so easy and uh, I actually own two homes now. Uh, yeah. 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 Two yeah. homes. Two. Yeah. I feel like yeah. Oprah, you get a home, you get a home. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, guys, man, that concludes, uh, man, one of our best episodes so far, DC. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Time. Thank y'all so much for always tuning in. Thank you to our guests. Yeah. And yeah, awesome. we'll be back. Y'all see, you'll see us soon. We'll yeah, be, man. I gotta come back. We, we'll we come back for sure. Time. We'll do it again. For sure. Awesome. All right, guys, Westwood Open House. Yeah.